Hi everyone, Edna Kimball, Edna Sells, and welcome to today's episode um, where we have the lovely assistant. I feel like you should do Vanna or something. I'm Pat to say Jack and your <laughs> Vanna wife. Exactly. <laughs> what do you think of our new setup? I love it here. I was just going to say that. I, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> Actually, you did. <laughs> you Spoilers, I've seen it, but I still, I love it even more. <laughs> okay, but it's your first time this mm -hmm. year being on the podcast. Yes. Right? Yes. So you haven't been on the podcast at all this year. Zero. That Zero. Sounds, yeah, that sounds like it's been a long time. Long, long. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. So today we are going to talk about the um, how Cherokee Nation Housing Authority Mortgage Assistance Program, or as people in our market refer to it, the MAP program, and that's capital M, capital A, capital P, and again that is through the Cherokee Nation Housing Authority. A lot of people say, oh, Cherokee Nation, but it, it specifically is through the Housing Authority. Now, the reason we have Brittany on here, Brittany, what do you know about the MAP program? Um, I have done endless MAP deals as the transaction coordinator, yes. and I bought with MAP. I went through the whole program and picked a house and closed and know all the ins and outs from every way, I feel. Absolutely, and in fact, the entire team, even those who are not qualified to utilize the MAP program, either because of income or because they weren't a tribal member, everyone actually went through the program to learn it so that they would be qualified to help our clients. Right, everyone on our team, we had her come in and just run through it for yeah. us. So yeah. the sales team sales and team. I, we all individually did that, so that was a really great uh, thing. So, so basically for those of you who aren't sure what the mortgage assistance program is, step number one. Application. Application. You have to be a tribal member. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be Cherokee? No. Don't Your have answer. to be Cherokee. <laughs> Just a tribal member and we can print you an application. They're, they're, they're pretty thick and I know a lot of people don't have printers and whatnot, but if you stop by here and ask for one, we're more than happy to print you an application to get started. Step number one, have your, get the application. Get the application. Step number two, and as the transaction coordinator, she feels very strongly about this, anything that you give to Cherokee Nation, upload and email or bring it by and let us upload and keep a copy of it. Right. Why do you recommend that? Um, just in case things get lost in the mail. Like I said, it is so much paperwork and they ask for so much information. It would suck for it to just somehow get lost and then have to do it all again. Yeah. It's just a good backup. And it just seems like that happens. It's like there might be 15 pieces of paper or documentations that they need and item number 12 is missing, but you're sure you did it. So. Um, because we've done so many of these and Brittany is so organized, we have found that when you put your package together, bring it by, we'll go through it, we'll scan it and have a carbon copy of it in case something does get misplaced or lost or whatever. Yes, we'd yep. be happy to mail it in too. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, um, step number three would be to work with a lender that is actually approved through Cherokee Nation. Did you use someone local or did you go online and hire somebody on the web? Um, I did local definitely and I th they did require me to get a couple different bids so that you can so that you're educated when you pick um, the lowest closing costs and you know shop your interest rates and stuff. I think step number three might be the class. Step number three. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the clock. No, I mean, this is why we're doing this. So step number three, tell us about the class. I mean, obviously I've sat through it, but it was more for educational or training, whereas you were an actual participant. Right. It's a class on Saturdays. Um, I think that you can split it up into two like shorter shifts, but I did one whole Saturday, like six, eight hours um, of education. And then you have to meet with your MAP counselor from the housing authority monthly for four to six months before you are allowed to close with your map counselor you talk about your budget and you talk about um it really just depends on where you start because you can you can start with bad credit and then she'll help you get your credit up or it, it just depends on where you are but you meet monthly and then four to six months in 
when you graduate, you um, you can start shopping. Yeah, and and unfortunately, not everyone can graduate in four to six months because once they get the application, they put you with a counselor. You meet with that counselor, and then they review. And if you do have bad credit. That's probably one of my favorite things. They're going to counsel you through that and help you get that corrected. Right. I think yeah. that that is just huge. We've had so many clients start from kind of a negative situation and then we get to kind of walk them through and help them get to the, hey, now I've graduated, if you will. Right. And they really explain like credit and your credit score and, um, and like budgeting and your debt to income ratio like they really break it down like even being in the business like i i was amazed at how much i learned in that in that class like to teach home i i wish everyone could go through the class yeah and cherokee nation um, housing authority their goal is to help tribal members obtain a home maintain a home and retain the home mm -hmm. and i love that because that's what they're doing in the class is first off they're making sure that you can qualify for the home not just through them but with a lender um, and then that you understand how to maintain the home they they do some training and and education on just changing filters and being aware and then how to retain the home that how to continue on a good budget and not get behind right right yeah so um, you you finished the class so you that was step number three take the class okay and in that process they they teach you that you should not just take the first lender that you find but one the lender has to be local and knowledgeable and on their approved list and pretty pretty much everybody in our market yeah is yeah. I, I mean maybe somebody has gotten kicked off but for the most part we've got really good lenders um, because if you hire someone out of state they do not have any concept of Cherokee Nation's requirements and it could be just a great big mess at the end of the day yeah everyone in our market is super familiar with the program and and it, it is hard I guess you can use whichever because we have had other lenders and they just don't know what they're doing, so. It, it got interesting, yeah. so yeah. yes, yeah. Um, so you would complete the class, but in the class you find out how to pick a lender, mm -hmm. and you're going to go and talk to a couple of different lenders and get um, basically a scenario of what your, your. A fee sheet? Yeah, a fee sheet, interest yeah. rate, what your closing costs would be, and then you go back and you meet with the counselor. Right. And the counselor kind of walks you through that too. Yeah, yeah, and then we go through it and then you pick one and then um, I didn't have a lot of issues so I, I went through it pretty smoothly, you know, so we um, we talked about it. I kind of knew what lender I wanted just because I've worked with so many, but I did still have to get the bids. I said, here, here we go. And um, yeah, I just got to pick my own realtor and start shopping for homes. Um, they told me when I was allowed to close, so Wait, that did was... You, did you really get to just pick any realtor? <laughs> you can pick any realtor in the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cherokee Nation doesn't care what realtor you picked. <laughs> I cared what realtor I picked. I picked yeah. Edna. <laughs> good, choice, good choice, good choice, yeah. Um, but no, you really can choose a realtor. If you're right, you can choose your Unless lender. You for me, then you got to choose <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, okay. Um, and then because you already had your credit and had done all the hard work before, so to speak, how quick or how short was that process? After I picked a home? Well, I got to, like I said, they tell you um, like when your graduation date is and when you're allowed to close. So I started shopping like two months before that. And knowing that I couldn't close until here. So I don't know, 45, 45 days. It was a standard. It didn't take any longer than a regular transaction. Absolutely. Um, but from from the time that you turned in the application until you were in contract for a home, what do you think is realistic on that? That was about four months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just tell people plan on 90 to 120 days average but I think you just need to go in knowing it could be up to six months, depending right. on where you're at in the process. Also, keep in mind, guys, it also depends on how many people are in the program at the time, because the counselors only have so many hours that they can meet with you and so many hours that they can do classes. I will point out that it doesn't have to be a Saturday. 
Right. Like you said, mm -hmm. they do offer kind of flex classes. And then if you can drive to another county, if you will, like if you're in Cherokee County and the hours don't work because of your job, you could actually drive to Sequoia County and take different scheduled classes. Okay. So, Lots so I of think options. A good, yeah, they really do try to make it as flexible as possible. But at the end of the day, yes, you're going to have to jump through a few hoops, mm -hmm. right? I think all of us tribal members are used to that. The, you know, it's it's nothing new. It's the same hoops that you usually jump you, that you usually jump through. Um, but but let me ask you this: What is the benefit at the end of the class? Because I haven't mentioned what you actually get oh, for going through the program. I got twenty thousand dollars towards my home that I got to pick. Yeah, they, I, I mean, I did, I did the stuff, it wasn't that hard, and I got $20,000 um, towards the purchase price of my home. So um, that covered the closing costs, like you don't pay out of, of pocket, like that covers your closing costs, and then the rest of it pays, pays down the loan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. down payment, so, um, and I, I find it, like if you, if I asked you to borrow $20,000, would you not want me to jump through some hoops before yeah. you gave me that twenty? I may dollars? make you take a class and show me your tribal card. Like it's, I didn't think it was anything, any. It, I didn't think it was anything too cumbersome. Like um, it's pretty much everything the lender <coughs> to want. Yeah, the lenders it's ask for a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, whether you're doing this program or not, I really don't understand when a buyer gets frustrated because the lender keeps asking for things. Because whether it's twenty thousand that the tribe is giving you, or you're trying to borrow $200,000 to buy a home. Yeah, they want to know where to find I you. I want some documentation from you before I sign that up. What do you think, Jill? Would you want yeah. some? Jill, Jill, a lot is, of money. Jill is doing this back there. <laughs> 100%, 100%, okay. Um, so then you, so you, you graduate, you pick the realtor of your choosing, um, and then you go shopping. Do you have, are there certain guidelines as far as the housing? I, I can't remember. I mean, there are, like it does have to live up to livable standards. They do their own, it's not a home inspection by any means, but they do go and do an environmental I don't just, I mean, yeah. it's a very basic inspection that the Cherokee Nation does in, a, in addition to whatever inspections you're doing on your own. Yeah, and now actually um, Cherokee Nation has updated that program and they do require the tribal members to have, to hire a licensed home inspector. Good. And depending on who your lender is, that can be part of your closing cost also, so you don't necessarily have to pay out of pocket, but again, that kind of depends on who you're working with. Um, so a licensed home inspector will go in, complete the home inspection, and then your counselor will go through that report with you. So that is to kind of protect you. Mm -hmm. um, also on location, you can't just buy anywhere in Oklahoma. Oh yeah, you do have to be in the, you have to be in the 14 counties or? Yeah, just, yeah. you have to be in Cherokee Nation, um, district and so it's important that you work with a realtor that understands that but there's a there's a website you can actually drop an address in there it's it's all of Cherokee County all of Adair County um, Muskogee County is where it gets really weird because you could have two houses side by side one is within the boundaries the other is not we've had that actually happen yeah. so um, so that's important to know you can't just and and this is the weirdest part to me is actually parts of Tulsa you can hmm. and parts of Tulsa you can't yeah I've never gotten that yeah the, the line is really weird so be sure and check that out and again that's why it's important to work with a lender and a realtor that are knowledgeable have done it before and can keep you because I would hate for someone like what if what if I showed you a home you fell in love you paid for the home inspection, went through all of that and then found out it's not in the boundary lines and right. you can't buy it. Right. Just kidding. I think you should check your location to your loan type at the beginning of any deal. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's that's a very good strategy. A good good place to start. Okay, um, so the home inspection you get through that. I mean, other than that, it really is. Yeah. Very standard. After, yeah, no, I don't remember, like it was just, 
it was smooth after that, just exactly the same as any other transaction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, by the by, six months in, you've pretty much given the Cherokee Nation everything that they need. You know what I'm? Right. Yeah. So you're just gathering documents for your for your lender. Yeah. Just standard. But and I think again, that's the beauty of it. Um, the realtor that you're working with, if you allow them to scan all of this stuff and hold it, once you get through the class and you're ready to talk to lenders then you have all of this once again that the realtor can just print off or forward directly to the lender that you chose. So I think that makes it super, super smooth. Um, anything else that, that's different when purchasing through the MAP program with Cherokee Nation? Mm. No. I do like that they do a very good job of following up. So like you have the home inspector, um, the counselor walks you through that, works with your realtor to get the repairs done, um, and they typically will also ask for documentation, and I really like that. So if there's a broken raptor in the attic, they say, please send us a photo and a, some documentation that it was done, because how many people are going to bid a crawl up in the attic and look at that? Or if it's something electrical, would, would we even know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I and I I get that anything that they're asking for, you're happy to provide. But I found them all to be easy to work with and and reasonable. They're not asking for anything crazy, um, and they're not they're not like pushy or mean about it. They're just yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I will say it's important also to when you are making an offer or when you've gotten to that process, the realtor that you've chosen to work with, you need to tell them right up front that this is the program that you're utilizing for your down payment assistance because there's certain things in your purchase offer that need to be documented. If you just take a contract to your counselor and it doesn't say anything about the MAP program, they kind of have a little bit of a freak out. Yeah, you have to, to circle back and, and refix it. Yeah, it does have to be in the contract that you're using that money because your, your lender that matters a to $20,000 difference. So. Yeah, yeah. so kind of a recap. Um, the location of where you buy is important. You've got to be within the, the district. Um, and then the condition. Um, they do, Cherokee Nation does not want you to buy a home that has tons and tons of repairs. Right. So if you are looking at something that says as is, you really need to be mindful. Is that you know, some big major structural problem or is it just ugly carpet and it needs some paint, right? Right. Those things can be negotiated throughout the process, but you're not going to be able to utilize any of that 20,000 toward those repairs. The 20,000 is to make your down payment and cover your closing cost, and then anything else that's left actually pays down on your home. Right, that's right. amazing. Instant equity. Instant equity, I love that. Um, I would also say, I think it's important for everyone to understand that not everyone qualifies. There is some income base guidelines in there, and then also um, it it is, they try to set it up for first time homeowners. So you can't go sell your current home and then go sign up for this program. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's definitely some stipulations, but I would not want to discourage you um, at the beginning. Uh, but again, if you have a current home that your name is on the deed, it would have to be some very, very unusual circumstances to qualify. Right. Yeah. But the classes are so valuable. I know several people that have gone through all of it and then their situation changes and they don't qualify anymore. No one is mad that they took the class. It's it's so it's so valuable. Yeah, that's a great point. It is, I yeah. That because I, I was even like, Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So really, really good stuff. So um now how long ago did you do your program? I bought my house in 2019. 2019, mm -hmm. okay, perfect. Um, and there is a big stipulation about selling the home. Are you allowed to sell the home? Um, at five years in, it would be, I would have to pay back half of the $20,000 to the Cherokee Nation. So it would be like a second mortgage payoff at this point. Um, after 10 years, you're free and clear. Yeah. And you don't have to pay back any of the $20,000. But technically, you can sell at any point. You can sell. It, it just... Um, but you owe yeah. the $20,000 or $19,000 or eighteen. dollars you know, depending on how long you've owned the home, mm -hmm. it's prorated through that. Right. Yeah. 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 So That's you've got true. a lot of equity in your home. I have so much equity. Yeah, because I bought in 2019 and then the prices went 
went a little wild. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Any um, any regrets on your home? Anything you wish you would have done slightly different when you purchased? Just as having been a first time buyer, uh, you know, single, you know, I think that's a different layer of my gosh, what am I not thinking of? Anything that you look back now and wish you would have? No, I don't think so. I mean, I was a first time home buyer, but I used you who knew everything. I feel like you really had my back through everything and um, you did that, that client thing where you, you made everything just magically, you know, I magically you great. Want. Yeah, I think I needed like a, what, I think I needed like a back porch light or something. I, I You know what I mean? Just all the little things. Like there was just, there's no stress um, when you use Edna because. Well, I didn't ask her to say that. Well, I, I mean, like it really, like I think, I, I, I mean, you, I would just say get someone experience with the program because it is, it's not hard, but it's, it's different. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit cumbersome in, in the idea of not knowing what to do next. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things about the program is they, they technically have you start making payments into your account. Into that, your savings. Yeah, that's, that's true. They, um, they take whatever your, your current rent is and they... So let's say your rent was $400, but your house payment is going to be $600. Now this was in 2019. <laughs> then they would ask you. They would ask you to put that $200 in saving every month. Um, the difference. The difference. Yeah, the difference between the four and six to um, to to just prove that or you know get your budget ready. You know, make sure that you know what that's going to feel like when your payment goes up. I just think that's so smart because so mm -hmm. many people. They're like, yeah, I can do it, I can do it. And then bam, all of a sudden you have to do it. Right, and, yeah. And it's a little. No, it is great. I, I did forget about that. My, my can mortgage I say, was lower. If you're currently paying $800 a month and your house payment's gonna be $1,100 a month, then you put the difference. Then in you the put account. that through. Sorry, I was, that's so 2019, to, wow. To talk about $400 rent? Well, maybe that was actually a little low too. <laughs> so. I was like, oh, where have you living? <laughs> She's like, I never <laughs> <laughs> but but you get the gist of it. So, um, and again, I think that's part of helping you re retain the home um, because they've prepared you by having you put that money in. Yeah, so yeah. smart. Yeah. So, I I think we've covered. I mean, it's not it. what everyone thinks is. Oh, it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be challenging. You do have to spend some time and and put some effort in. But the way I see it is, if it's let's say it's eight hours. I would gladly give up eight hours of my time for someone to give me $20,000. Jill, Jill is going, yes, please. where do yeah. I sign up? Jill, yeah, exactly. Sign up. Are you ready to sign up? I don't know. $20,000 that goes towards your down payment and your closing costs. That's a big that's a deal. deal. Yeah, for eight hours. I mean, that's basically being paid $20,000 for eight hours of your time. Yeah, I don't know who teaches it now, but she was really entertaining that's when I took it too. <laughs> That is better than a game show. This exactly. Game. Winner, winner. Are, yeah, your odds are way better than a game show, I would say. And definitely better than the lottery. Yeah, we're going to get political now. Okay. Okay. Um, so you've been a homeowner since 2019. Any surprises or anything that, that you would tell a young first-time buyer to kind of be mindful of and don't freak out because these things do happen or? Yeah, pretty much anything can happen. The same stuff that you used to call the landlord for, now you just have to take care of. I just, I mean, I think just have a separate savings for, for incidentals and stuff. Um, yeah, it, pretty much anything is going to be like a thousand dollars or you know five hundred to a thousand dollars to fix. But um, yeah, it's like what you know when you're going to Branson and everything is forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's kind of like that with owning a home. You know yeah. it's going to be five hundred to a thousand. So I, it's it's still worth it. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's, it's not like everything breaks all the time, but but yeah, just have a little money for if something breaks, you're a homeowner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so some of the some of the most unusual things that I've had happen after young first time home buyers, I've had first time home buyers call me about it was about two weeks after closing, and and I want you to like if you've ever bought a home from me and you have a question or something broke or whatever, utilize your realtor for handyman, a plumber you know, for those service people that have done well for other clients um, and maybe you get to skip some pain points. But 
This was a unique one. I had a young couple call me. They had been in the home for about two weeks and they asked me if it would be okay if they painted a wall. Right? Because, yeah. and, and it, it, you know, to this day I get, like it hits me right in the heart because one of their story was no one in their home had ever owned. See, I'm going to get like emotional because this is why I love this job. No one in this family had ever owned. They had always been renters. And this young couple, they had thought, I'm serious. <laughs> They had thought that they would never be able to own a home and they, they came to an open house because it was in their neighborhood and they were like, oh, we can't buy a home. And I was like, you can't buy a home now or why, why can't you buy a home? And it started just like this relationship with this young couple and they weren't able to buy at that time, but over a process of about two and a half years, yeah, we got them into a home and and no they had never lived in a home you know their parent they didn't they were always in an apartment or in a rental and they you know there's certain things you're not allowed to do and it just it was one of the most amazing experiences ever to help them buy the home but then to have them follow up and say are we allowed to paint now you know and and uh, own pets and do these things you yeah. know so it's just it's a it's a really cool job that I have, but um, but if that's don't assume that you can't ever buy a home. Let us kind of help you with that and see if that is because I think we could get everybody there. Yeah, I mean, in this, I understand if no one in your family has ever done it. It does seem like a big undertaking, but I I do I do think it's doable for anyone. I mean, it might take two and a half years, but as long as you're, I'm I mean, it's better to ask someone what you need to do and move move towards that yeah. and yeah I, I remember he was not even 21 she had just turned 21 when I met them and I was just like blown away with wanting to start that early um, I, again they didn't think they were starting yeah <laughs> but he, you opened the door so I stepped right in you know so um, so yeah don't assume that you can't buy and if you are a tribal member don't assume that you don't qualify just you know, try, yeah. yeah. Reach out. We'll we'll provide as much documentation and put you in touch with the right people and help you even complete the application if you need that. So, so as a homeowner, Brittany, since 2019, I have the controversial question of the day. Okay. <laughs> Chill behind the cameras, like, yeah. What is it? What just is one. it? One. Okay, just <laughs> one question. Just one question. Um. Because you are a homeowner and you are a pet owner, if you were selling, she's not, I've tried. If you were selling, no, actually I haven't tried. I think you should keep that home. No, I would keep it. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. At this stage, I would want you to buy another home and rent that one out. Yeah. Uh, not not now, but. Home and rent it out. Yeah. I don't want you to ever sell. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not good for my business, but it's good for Brittany, so in the long run, she'll buy a rental or something. I'll do yeah. something. Okay, so sorry. Back to the controversial, controversial question. question. Okay. Um, my we pets. We already talked about making your bed, so that's not right. a question, but it's about pets. If you were selling your home, do you want feedback that a buyer thinks that there's dog hair everywhere or the filter is covered with dog hair or there is a pet smell as a homeowner does does it hurt your feelings for someone to tell you or would you want to know no i mean if i i think if i was trying to sell i would want to know you would want to know right and who would you be mad at the messenger or the person the dog the dog <laughs> Fair enough. So, and, and I know you know this story. Years ago, I actually went into a home and it, the woman had a lot of cats and the smell was so strong and I'm not, I don't have a strong sense of smell. Like you have to tell me, Edna, whew, you know, um, it has to be really severe for me, for it to affect me. But this was so severe, like uh, it smelled like ammonia. My eyes were watering. The, the client was just like, no way, no how. You know, they, a few steps in the door and they left. But I'm like, I gotta see the house, I'm here. So I go through the whole house and um, I really did, ha that was one of the few times I did have to go home and shower because I couldn't get the smell. I felt like the smell was on me, it was that strong. So when I go back to the office, um, the listing agent, you know, I'm passing them in the hall 
and this is a different brokerage. I've worked for several brokerages. Anyway, I'm passing the, the listing agent to this day. She's a good friend of mine. Um, but she said, how was the showing? And I said, it was eye-watering. <laughs> <laughs> not in a good way and she said I know and I was like so I mean is the seller just not willing to correct the problem and she said I, I just don't know and I said well have you told the seller and she was like oh I'm afraid it would hurt her feelings yeah and I've always thought as a homeowner who's never does not have pets I've always thought it would hurt my feelings way worse for half of Cherokee County to go through my home and know that it smelled so good. Jill, you're with me then. Yeah. You would want to know. Yeah. See, I agree with that. Yeah, definitely let me know if my house is stinky. I mean, for, for the money. That's what, you know what I mean? Like, I want to sell, I want money. Let me know if my house is stinky. Let me know, whatever. House my house is not stinky. Her house is not stinky at all. <laughs> at all. Well, so, so again, I always come at everything from a, if your home was for sale. What if your home was not for sale? Would you want to know? I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't want my house to smell would you tell like someone? dogs anyway. Would you anyway. tell me if my house was stinky? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Jill is going. Yeah, maybe not. Tell me if my house is stinky. Depends on the person. The rela depends on the relationship. Depends on the relationship. Okay, fair enough. I tell Herb. You tell <laughs> <laughs> stinky so which you know you may not know this but he does the majority of the cleaning no I'm never home so yeah I mean I do like the deep deep clean but he does the the day-to-day -day your house always smells amazing oh smells <laughs> what she was the, your house always smells oh amazing. no it always smells great amazing and you have like music playing when no one's there <laughs> it's a vibe <laughs> Always smells. Oh, yes. Stinky. <laughs> Fabuloso. That's the secret. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the. I don't know that that was such a controversial like, question. Yeah. But. Let me know if my house stinks. You all have my permission. Whether it's for sale or not. Okay. Oh, well, I'd have to be invited for. No, I'm kidding. I'm, come I'm, hang out I'm, with the dogs. <laughs> okay, guys. So um, Cherokee Nation Mortgage Assistance Program, also known as the MAP program, if you are interested in getting details tells reach out to myself or anyone on the team we'll get you some information um, or if you have a trusted advisor a realtor go ahead and reach out to them also um, and lenders also are a great source of information as always please like follow and share so that we can get the information out to as many people as possible and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover or you have a controversial question you want us to ask We'll go on a limb and we'll ask it. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching.